Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Enlightened Entrepreneur. This program is sponsored by World Outsourcing Solutions, where we specialize in helping business owners with all your outsourcing needs. You can visit us and check out us on uh, www.worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. Uh, today, I'm very excited. Uh, I have a special uh, guest, uh, Darren Peer. Uh, who's been uh, in the trenches, done it, and uh, is ready to share his own experience to other business owners. Now, uh, Darren has a very special story. He's an author of the great book that you can find on Amazon and major uh, outlets, book outlets, uh, that is called The Invitation to Love, recognizing the gift despite pain, fear, and resistance. In his book, he discusses the topic of love and the barriers that are often present that hinders that love from being fully expressed. Now, we have uh, Darren here on the call, you know, talking to business owners, because Darren has figured out that uh, the issues he discusses in his book often affects business owners today. So we have Darren uh, today talking to us. Darren, welcome to the interview. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, thank you again for uh, taking time to uh, share with our community what you've discovered uh, over a period of time and uh, to talk about other things in your book. Now, to get us started, Darren, uh, I know our audience would love to get to know who you are, your educational background, and uh, you know what you're about so that they can relate uh, with you better. So can you tell us a bit about yourself? Absolutely. So my name, as was mentioned before, is Darren Pierre, and I grew up in the Southeast United States. Um, grew up there, moved and lived for a portion of time after finishing graduate school in San Francisco, California. After spending some time out there, I went on to get my PhD. So I have my PhD in College Student Affairs Administration, where really we kind of trouble uh, what does leadership look like at a college university level. And while I was there getting my PhD, graduate school often serves a great time of self-reflection and introspection. Right. And so that was a great opportunity for me to think about those areas where love was not being fully expressed in my life. And the journey of thinking about love, and love is in many different contexts. So I don't mean it in the small way we think about it as love between two people in an intimate relationship. Love is between two people in a relationship like that. It's between parent and guardian. It's also in business because love is a commitment. And so what was hindering those commitments from being fully expressed in an effective manner uh, really led to the inspiration for me writing the book that was mentioned before, the invitation to love, recognizing the gift despite pain, fear, and resistance. So the book was published about a year ago, and I've been utilizing the last year speaking, consulting, and taking opportunities to celebrate those tenets of the book that I think are very germane to people who are looking to forge stronger relationships in their lives and also are looking to move in greater spaces, both personally and professionally. Incredible. Uh, you say something uh, very special in your book about uh, your relationships. Uh, you know, before uh, you wrote the book, that when you were at, uh, doing your PhD during that reflection moment, you had time to reflect on your own relationship, how love maybe uh, was not fully expressed. Can you talk to us about that experience? Absolutely. So one of the relationships I speak about heavily in the book is my relationship with my dad. And for the longest time, I thought that my dad and I, the reason why our communication was not as strong as I would have liked it to be was because that there was some type of difference between the two of us where he wasn't able to see my perspective or he didn't like me. A narrative I was creating in my own mind about why our relationship was where it was. When really the barrier that was went within our relationship was shame. So my dad carried a lot of shame from his own ineffective practices and that shame is what led to distance in our relationship. Uh, and so understanding that that was the barrier, not a difference in between us interpersonally, but shame that had built up for himself over time uh, is what led to the distance that was there. And then my own journey of uh, recognizing that and responding to him more effectively really created profound change in our relationship. 
incredible. Now, still on that, you know, how did all this sort of uh, not so well relationship affected the other areas of your your life, like your education, your business, you know, or your other relationship? Were there anything visible that you can trace back to that? Absolutely. And this is really key for business owners to get a hold of. If your relationships in your personal life are not moving effectively, you cannot move effectively as a manager. And one of the great things I learned a long time ago is people don't leave jobs, they leave managers. And so a lot of people would ask, well, Darren, what in the world does your relationships with your dad or with a significant other or with your parents, what does that have to do with business? It's directly tied to business. Because if you're not having a fully functioning home life, personal life, your business life cannot be fully functioning. They are directly correlated with one another. And I think that is a really jarring thing probably for some to hear. It may be fear invoking for others because I think some people like to live in this silo space of, well, okay, my home life is not very good, but work is great and that's good. No, your work life may be good, but it's not at its fullest level of potential. It's not at its fullest level of effectiveness. You're not maximizing on your possibilities in business if you're not tending to those things that need to be tended to in your personal life. Incredible. I love the way you are making it so clear that your personal life is directly affected, your business life is directly affected by what's happening in your personal life. Now, suppose in our audience there is somebody who uh, doesn't have that great relationship you know, with their dad. How can they solve that so that they can then move this into, uh, into the business area? You know what is so powerful, and that's such a great question, is that you can complete relationships with people who are even dead. I have a good friend who was doing a lot of the work that's talked about in the book, and for years he had lived with this narrative that his father didn't like him. His father and his mother divorced when he was five, and his father committed suicide when he was 12. And in that years between when he was five and when he was 12, he only saw his dad one time. So he took that as my dad doesn't care anything about me. His dad would call every Sunday to speak to him and his sister between the time that he was five and when his dad died when he was 12. And he would never speak to him on the phone. Right. The one time he came to visit, his dad came to visit, his dad brought two cats. And my friend was recognizing this as a grown adult whose dad had been dead for over 12 years. He was like, oh my goodness, that one time that my dad came to visit, he bought two cats. I guess he gave them to my sister. And then he remembered that his sister is allergic to cats. And what he got a hold of in that moment was that his dad had brought those two cats for him. And he was realizing that just like I spoke about with my own father, his dad was living in shame and guilt because he was an alcoholic, he abused drugs, and wasn't showing up effectively for his kids. The only way he knew to connect with his son was through those two cats. Now, what my friend also realized was that this was impacting him in the workplace. He was going to work, continuing trying to get the acceptance of other people. He was becoming a doormat to other people, trying to be a people pleaser because he was trying to garner the acceptance of the people he worked with because he never got the acceptance that he wanted from his father. Right. And when he was able to get complete with the fact that his father cared about him deeply, but his father's own struggles were the hindrance from that love being expressed. Once he was able to get a hold of that, that he never was lacking his father's acceptance. His father had his own struggles. Once he completed that conversation with himself, with the father who was dead, he was then able to complete the conversations with others in terms of stopping the unhealthy practice of continuing trying to please others and garner the acceptance of others at the expense of yourself. And so it impacted him. He changed jobs. He moved on to a much more fruitful position that worked much better for him. But I think that's a really practical example of what we just mentioned before, which is when we complete things in our personal life, it inevitably is going to show up in how we show up in the workplace. Incredible. Now, he Imagine in our audience, uh, one of the business owners uh, recognize 
that their personal life is impacting their business life, just like we are talking about. How can they go about changing that? I'm assuming it's also covered in the book. So once you get a hold of how your personal life is impacting your work life, what you need to then begin to do is to figure out what are you being called to respond to in your own life. So in my book, I talk about five, the Fab Five, our relationship with our parents, our relationship with folks, our relationship with food, our relationship with our home, and our relationship with our finances. So you've got to begin to say, wow, I'm realizing that my home life is not fully healthy. Then think about those five things I just mentioned and what are you being asked to respond to? There are millions and millions of people who are living in severe and significant debt because they're allowing monetary things to compensate for areas where they feel shame or areas where they feel pain. I self-medicate by buying a shirt. I self-medicate by buying a new car. So first think about those things that are unhealthy practices that you're engaging in there. And we do the same thing with food. We do the same thing with food. I medicate with food. And so I eat, 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 trying to suffocate the pain that's there. Once you begin to figure out within those five things, your relationship with yourself, parents, food, home, and finances, once you begin to see where are those areas that you're being called to respond to, other things will start to open up for you in terms of what you need to do next. So the work always starts with self, then it goes to others. I think originally we think, okay, I have a problem with you, so let me just go straight to you first. Well, first let me address what's there for me. Uh, because that's the key, is figuring out where is the root of how we got into this dysfunctional relationship together. And then once I respond to that, then I can have a more authentic, honest conversation with you around those things that I need to complete with you. Incredible, uh, re really incredible what you're just sharing there. Uh, now, Darren, there are three parts to your book. Uh, which uh, I would love us to explore at this point because they uh, they talk directly to the business owners. Can we talk about the first part uh, and then uh, the second and then the third one uh, during this time? Absolutely. And this is great for those who are opening up new businesses, so they're just starting out, and for those who've been in business for years and really trying to think about how they take their work to the next level. And so I will talk about each of the three points Feel free to interrupt me any point where you want me to expand on something or kind of repeat a concept. The book, about The Invitation to Love, is broken into three parts. The first part is living your truth. And this is really powerful for those of you who are opening up your own business. You really need to live in your truth. What is it that you're passionate about? And I spoke about earlier, uh, before we got on this call together, I shared, I said, what is the thing that you wake up thinking about and what is the thing you go to sleep thinking about? And for some of you, it may be opening up a lemonade stand. You think about lemonade when you wake up, you go to bed thinking about lemonade. If that's what's in your truth, then live in that. And everyone around you may think that you're crazy. Why would you open up this business? You're 50 or you're 60 or you just graduated from college and you're not well established. Live in your truth. If your inner voice is telling you that this is something that's powerful and really important to you, then move in that space and know that when fear comes, it's just the resistance that's naturally part of life when people are moving in great directions. Nothing great is ever done without fear. So fear is a natural byproduct of moving into greatness. The second concept is perseverance. So you've lived in your truth. You just graduated from college and you're really excited about opening up this new business. And you're thinking, okay, after my first month, I'm gonna have $10,000 in sales and you only have 100 and you have $900 worth of bills. So now you're $800 in the hole and you're like, well, I guess I should quit. No, you have gotta realize that it takes perseverance. I spoke about before we got on our call today about Apple. You think about Macintosh when it started in the 80s. It had this great boom, and then it had this great bust in the late 80s. And then it has this new resurgence in the late 90s. And now look at Apple today, really one of the world leaders when it comes to technology. And they're really transforming the way we gather information. But that had to come from perseverance. 
the business fail to come back up. So keep that in mind that you live in your truth. Find what you're passionate about because you're going to need that passion to get you through. You're going to need that tenacity of your truth to get you through, to celebrate that idea of perseverance. And then the third component is have a healthy disregard for the impossible. You look at some of the great, you know, uh, entities of our world, Apple, Facebook, and others. These are people who had healthy disregards for the impossible. That what could I do to transform the way people connect online? That's what Facebook has done. What have I done to transform the way people think about their personal computing with the computer? And that's what Apple has done with the Apple computer. Now with the iPad, iPhone, iWatch, they are transforming what computers look like for us. But that had to come with a healthy disregard for the impossible. And so for business owners seasoned, Think about it from the place of living in your truth, persevering, and knowing when difficult times have come, that like Apple had to do in the late 90s, you may need to innovate and have a healthy disregard for the impossible about what could be next. And now we're seeing Apple at some of its highest heights that we've ever seen it. For the new business owner, live in your truth. Take time to cultivate the volume of your inner voice. Learn what you're passionate about and allow that passion to help you persist when difficulties come. And have a healthy disregard for the impossible for what that could be. And share your dreams with people who have the ability and the capacity to celebrate your dreams. You, there are so many dream crushers. If I would have told you all the people who thought my book was a bad idea, I would have quit a million times over. You've right, got right. to find the one or two people, and it may only be one or two, who are able to help you cultivate that healthy disregard for the impossible. I think when you do those three things, your truth, persevere, and have a healthy disregard the impossible, you will find great success and great fulfillment, more importantly, uh, in your work as a business owner. Incredible. Incredible. I, love I love what you spoke, spoke about, about uh, yeah. when it comes to it comes disregard to of the impossible. Because uh, if you had to look at any business uh, that has been started, somebody had to, you know, was faced with an impossible situation, but they still you know, went ahead and started a business and then, you know, it grows from there. Now, let's jump on to the next part of our interview, uh, uh, Darren. In your own experience as an entrepreneur, I know you run your own business right now as a speaker, you know, what are some of the challenges that you have faced which you feel, uh, you know, other business owners have faced as well that you would like to share your insights on? Well, I think the first one is, is that, you know, we I, I had these parameters of what success would look like and right. that it would happen instantaneously. And no great movement comes without slow, steady progression. The race is won by those who are willing to endure till the end. And so one of the great lessons that's been there for me is learning that the success that I'm looking for takes a little bit longer. You know, where I'm at right now with my book and with speaking and consulting, I am excited about the possibilities. And I recognize that it took a lot longer than I thought it would. So when you don't find your business, the number one business in whatever area you're in, whatever your field is, uh, know that that's okay. Uh, know that you need to continue to innovate yourself. And so continue to challenge yourself and think about how am I continue to grow and evolve? So the invitation to love is not just a stagnant book. It's not just, okay, the book is done, now it's dead. No, it's continuing to think about how do I continue to celebrate it further? How do I continue to take the concepts of the book and talk about them in conversations like this or through uh, my social media platform, or through my website, so that the book continues to be a living brand of what it is that I do? And then how also do I take every opportunity that I can to share with other people what I'm up to in the world. There's this great quote that's used a lot here in the States that says, closed mouths don't get fed. <laughs> and I agree with that so much. If you're doing a lemonade stand, you need to tell everybody, even when they don't, even when you think they don't drink lemonade, oh yeah, you know, I'm starting a new lemonade stand. And this is the kind of lemonade I'm doing, doing organic lemonade that's all grown locally, yada, yada, yada. Somebody is gonna hear that and they may not drink lemonade, but they have a family member who does. And they're like, oh my goodness, I met this great guy. He says he's doing a lemonade stand. 
and he's doing all organic local lemonade. And then they are going to be there for it. So, you know, whenever I have the opportunity, the situation where I share with people, yeah, I wrote a book and this is what it's about. And this is how I connected with the concepts which helped illuminate what I am doing now. And you'll be amazed that that word of mouth will get to other people. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you mentioned something that sort of uh, resonates with what I have experienced in my life. It is race is not won by those, is won only by those who endure to the end. Yeah. Uh, absolutely truth. Talk to me about those difficult days uh, that we as entrepreneurs get to experience every now and again, uh, you know, when things are not going our, our way. How do you deal with those days? Well, those days, those difficulties, I mentioned it a little bit in my book, when I am dealing with the difficulty of the moment and I am just feeling overwhelmed, I ask myself, what am I supposed to be doing right now? Yes. Sometimes we get so caught up in climbing Mount Everest that we don't realize that the step to get to the peak of Mount Everest is the next step that we take. That's one step closer. So from the writing of the book, which I think would be the same as someone creating the business that they're going to do. If when I was on page one on my word processing device, I couldn't think of this 336 page book that was not even coming. And there were some days where I'm like, I have no more to write. And I would just be like, well, what is the next thing I'm supposed to be doing? Okay. Well, I probably need to proofread the section I just did. Okay. So that's what I would do. You know, as you think about your business, you know, yes, you may have these great dreams and they may seem overwhelming and it may seem like they won't happen. But what am I supposed to do today? The first thing that I do every morning is check my email that my account that's situated for the book and figure out what are the things I need to respond to today. I'm not thinking about, you know, what am I going to be doing five years from now? Am I going to be writing my next book? Am I going to be doing this that, and the third? Right now, when I'm having difficulties, I'm just saying, okay, today, at this moment, I need to check my inbox and figure out what are those things I need to respond to as it relates to the book. And then those next questions will answer themselves. So when you're climbing your own metaphorical Mount Everest to get to the peak of your own business, don't worry about how am I going to climb this next 6,000 feet. Just say, but right now, I need to climb one foot to get one foot closer to that end. And if you keep that in mind, and I know that next foot doesn't seem exactly exciting. That next foot may not be, well, I sure do wish I was at the peak. Well, that's not today. <laughs> but know that the peak will happen for whatever your peak is supposed to be. Just give it time. And know that it's a lot of things that are not um, exciting and not glamorous to get to where you want to get to. Um, and that's where I think people miss out. But is the part of the process uh, is, uh, as you go. Now, yeah, knowing what you know now, Darren, uh, you know, what would you do differently uh, in running your own business, or be it uh, in the promotion of your book? What would you do different? Maybe do more of or maybe less of? I would have, what I would have done differently is I would have set my expectations up differently. I would have I would have went in with the mindset that this is a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, and so that would be one thing that I would have done a little bit differently. I think I would have thought about where all the various audiences that can connect to the book. I have been amazed at the people who connected with the book. Some people connected with the book in ways I never even thought about. And so you've got to think about your business from the same place. So you're thinking, oh, I'm doing a lemonade stand. Well, yes, you're doing a lemonade stand, but you're, all, you're using all organic and all locally owned products. So you're also engaging in social justice. You're engaging in sustainability. You're engaging in helping support the local economy. So when you articulate, when you market your lemonade stand, don't say I am selling lemonade at a lemonade stand. Say, I am a small business owner who's committed to supporting my local community, local farmers, and helping people have healthy ways in which they engage with lemonade, with products that have no artificial sweeteners. You know, really think about crafting broadly what your narrative is. 
You know, I think when people would, when I would have first thought about my book a year ago, I would have not thought about it for business. But my book is directly related to business. And so taking the time to sit with, really think about intentionally, where are all those markets that you didn't even think about your work could impact that may impact? You know, Apple has to do that. Computers are not going to be around forever. I mean, they're becoming less and less the modality in which we use. So they had to think about, okay, well, I need to move the phone. And then after phone, it was like, okay, I need to move to a tablet. And when they first came out with the tablet, I remember reading reviews and people were like, this is the dumbest thing ever. Who wants to carry this around? And now you see so many different other entities are utilizing tablets and different things like that. And now they moved on to watches. So continuing to think about, no, we're not just this. It's not just a book. It's not just a lemonade stand. Really sit with what it is that you have and think about broadening your audience and challenging yourself and who all could connect with whatever it is you're doing or whatever it is the product or service that you offer. Incredible. That would, that would have done for myself differently. Incredible. Appreciate that, Darren. Now, uh, I know there are some people in our audience today who definitely would love to connect you at some level or just want to check out the book. Uh, you know, how can they go about doing that? That's a great question. So you can visit www.theinvitationtolove.com, all one word, theinvitationtolove.com. You can check, uh, there's space there to connect with me there. You can also check me out through Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and all those pieces are there. You can email me directly at Darren, D-A-R-R-E-N, at theinvitationtolove.com. So the website is theinvitationtolove.com. You can email me at Darren at theinvitationtolove.com. And you'll see on the website the different various forms of social media in which you can connect to me and my work. Incredible. Uh, Darren, thank you so much. You've done outstandingly sharing your time and your knowledge, and especially the key things in your book about uh, that can help our community. Do you have any parting words to uh, budding entrepreneurs, uh, maybe who are at that stage where things seem stagnated? Uh, what would you say to them? I would say thank you. I would say thank you for being one of those rare individuals on our planet who are having the tenacity to move beyond fear and do something that's outside the box. I would say that while you may not get the accolade of thanks every day, know that there is someone who is looking at you and is inspired by what you're doing. And when you get tired and when you're feeling like you want to quit and when you feel like success will never find you, Know that there are people who are rooting for you and who are looking at you because they have their own entrepreneurial spirit that is being invigorated by seeing you do what you do. So continue to model the way for others so that we can continue to have great products and services for the world to consume. Incredible. Incredible. What makes you tick? I always want to know about our experts. What keeps you going with the project? Oh man, what keeps me going? What keeps me going is looking at the world around me and mover and shakers in our world and what they're doing that's continuing to be innovative. Sometimes those are world leaders. Um, sometimes those are leaders in entertainment. Sometimes those are leaders um, on the sports field. But who are those people who are really doing innovative work? Because sometimes those inspirations may not be in your own locus of area of control. There's probably not many people in your direct sphere that might be opening up their own businesses. But you'll see uh, your world leaders who are doing something that's really incredible. Like, wow, it's really invigorating. You know, I'm really moved by the conversations here in the United States that are being led by First Lady Michelle Obama around wellness and how do we eat healthy. And I'm like, yes, my health is directly correlated to me as a business owner. And, you know, people think, well, eating healthy isn't really that important. Well, here is, you know, a lawyer, Princeton educated with a Harvard Law degree, who's saying that this is really important, that healthy living is important, that she can't be fully sustained in the fullest expression of herself without responding to that. So I look at people like that. 
And I would say, um, I look at people in my close sphere of influence who are living the lives that they love, and I figure out what are they doing to love those lives that they love. Absolutely. Absolutely. Success leaves clue, and you can learn from other people that are doing that. By the way, do you have any mentors in your life, the people that are helping you in your business? Absolutely. There is a group of five people who I consult with. Uh, one is a fashion designer. Another is a consultant. Another is an author and a speaker. Another owns her own yoga business and studio, and another is a world speaker, uh, speaking her own concepts similar to my book. And I consult with them. They're my fab five. And so I periodically connect with them over the phone. I connect with them because they live all over. Uh, and so we connect, and they really help me shape what it is. Uh, that I'm doing and what I'm up to in the world. It's important to have those people, and I name those five people and what they do because you can hear from what I'm sharing that they're dynamic, powerful people in the world. That's what you're going to need around you to really lift you up and keep you going. Incredible. That is so helpful, Darren. And again, thank you so much for being here with us today uh, and giving such a great interview. And I'm sure uh, all the business owners in our audience today have learned a great deal from your book and uh, you know what you've shared uh, with us today. Uh, so I would like to invite you, if you are in our audience and uh, you really want to connect with Darren, uh, go to the site of the Invitation to Love, all one word, Dot com. That is www.theinvitationtolove.com. Or you can send uh, Darren an email. Again, it's Darren at theinvitationtolove.com. Uh, uh, this is in a very important area of, uh, of your business for you to have this aspect of your life sorted out. Because what happens in you often decides what happens in your business, what happens out there, also decide what happens in your relationships. And by you listening to this, it shows that you are among those 10, uh, you know, top 3% uh, of people who wants to make things happen, who wants to change, who want to see good result. By you listening, it tells me something that you are different from the rest of the world. And by you actually doing or implementing the strategies that we have been talking about, you actually set yourself apart from those that attempt to do things and they can actually make it happen. And I know you do, and I really appreciate all of you. And if ever you are stuck when it comes to uh, needing some assistance with outsourcing, uh, do visit our website, which is www.worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. Dot com and it will put you in touch with the right virtual assistant there. Or alternatively, send an email to support at worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. With that said, Darren, once again, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you so much for having me. We certainly would love to have you back, maybe talking on another subject uh, you know, uh, to do with businesses at some point in future. We'd love to do that. We'd love to do that. Incredible. Okay, thanks guys for being here with us and I wish you a great day. Whatever you do, do it wholeheartedly and do it with passion. Goodbye for now.